Hello there. So in the last video, we covered the setup for the the, the browser Solidity interface for, for for building, compiling, and and running your first smart contract on a local instance of Ethereum. And I think the, I think the next logical step is to is to show you how to to use the application binary interface, which you get from the from the compiler, to actually invoke the the functions on the smart contract code. Um, from the from the actual uh, from the console window itself, rather than the the browser window, um, it just it it becomes more intuitive at that point, and and so I think um, that the browser is useful for compiling the code and giving you feedback on whether the code actually compiles, and also deploying it the original con the initial sorry contract the blockchain, but the 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 console window is <clears throat> is really where is the, probably the best place to <clears throat> to interact with the contract. So I'm going to start um, with a, a so carry on from the last video where we had a simple adder contract, right? So we're going to um, it has a few functions. Um, it has a name which is a state variable. We talked about that a bit last time. Um, it has a, a, a function to set the name, one to get the current name, one to add two numbers that you supply. Just add them together and return the answer. One to add two numbers together that you supply, but also to rename the contract while you're at it. Okay. Um, and we'll 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 explore that in a second. So first thing we have to do is we have to um, deploy. Let's let's deploy a new instance of this contract to the to the blockchain. I'm running Geth. Um, just so you remember, let me just restart Geth. It's exactly the same command from the last video. So I explained all the flags. You have to use these RPC flags in order to be able to connect to your browser, right? So I'm going to restart Geth. Then I'm going to have to unlock my Account, my default account with the passphrase, and then I'm going to start mining as well, right? So there we go. And remember, so we're, 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 what I have to do, I always have to disconnect and then reconnect to the Web3 provider when I restart Geth, and, the, and then you've got localhost 8545 there, which is the same port. Um, is, is in the RPC flags when I restart again. So if I now, um, if I now try and create a new instance of this, so now we're waiting for the transaction to be mined. So hopefully this is kind of familiar from the from the previous video. Okay. So and if I go down here, I should see that in my pending transactions. So yeah, we have a transaction here. Remember the input for the new deployment of a new contract. The input field is the actual bytecode of the of the contract itself. I can see that that has now come back. Um, so now that we'll see down here the pending transactions is 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 empty. Keep doing that for some reason, um, and so that's that that that's great. And and we can we saw last time so we can add we can supply two numbers and we can call add on them, right? And we get eleven. Uh, and and don't forget and that doesn't cause any new transactions because it doesn't change the state, right? So if if any of that's unclear from the last video, just please leave me a a question in the comments. Um, if, and then let's just run add and rename. So if we give, so let's say add for, add 45 and 64 and 63, but also rename the contract contract to uh, Billy Bob, right? So because we're adding two numbers together, but we're also changing the the name, which is a state variable, we we require this to be mined, right? We don't care about the numbers because they're not state variables, but we do. Um, this is a, a state changing uh, function, so we have to wait and down here again. We'll see, we'll see. There's there's one there's one pending transaction here, and I don't know how long it's going to take to mine it. Shouldn't be very long. And there we go. So the so the the, the block has been mined. So now we can see up here. We can see that the so this transaction here. Um, has has successfully uh, successfully run, and if we now call the get name, that's now renamed. We can see that the, the name is, has successfully been changed to to Billy Bob. So that's just a refresher a little bit on. So we've created this new contract, and we've shown that we can we can call all the functions from from the console. But how do we get to the point where we can actually get a hold of this contract from the from the console? Because we like to use the console because that's the purer way of doing things. Um, what we have to do is we have to go down here and where it says interface, remember we talked about the application binary interface, so we have to copy 
you call, or you might call it, you might see it called as a, a, ABI. And I'm going to copy all of that, right? Just control C the whole thing. And in your window down here, we're going to do a um, a a, a JavaScript uh, a, a variable assignment. So let's say var ABI equals equals, and then just copy, sorry, paste what into the window, right? So now don't worry about the undefined thing there. That that, that doesn't make any difference. So if we if we type ABI, we see this is this is the this is it's formatted slightly nicer. This is the binary. Oh, sorry. This is the this is the code that defines the interface, so that I can call these these methods, right? Um, it's not it's not part of the blockchain. Um, the only thing that's on the blockchain is the actual. If you go back to the is the actual bytecode, the bytecode, right, of the um, of the contract. This is external sort of metadata about the contract that enables clients who are interested in interacting with that contract to to see. Okay, well, what what are the, what functions are available? It's like it's like a catalog that says, oh, okay, let me see what's available in this contract. Okay, I can call, I can call get name, I can call add, I can call add and rename, etc., etc. So the next thing we have to do is find the address at which the contract is sitting on the blockchain, right? So remember that the contract is everything inside this, the contract instance, right? Is everything inside this, this, uh, this little box, and I can expand it, and I can see, okay, here are the functions. Um, here's the bytecode, etc., etc. Now, what I need to do when it when it says add a at this, this is the address of the contract, right? Now, each contract, each each specific deployment of a contract, each instance. So each contract is deployed to the blockchain, and it is um, it sits there at a particular address. Now, for those of you in Bitcoin, um, I'm going to go into more detail about this in a later video. Don't get confused in the sense that well how can you know in bitcoin nothing exists at an address bitcoin is just a list of transactions on a blockchain um and, and there's no concept of and there's no concept of state in the bitcoin blockchain but this is slightly different in, in ethereum and I'll, I'll go into it later videos but so for now just bear in mind that on each node at a particular address somewhere within the client um this is where this contract lives right it's got a, each contract has its own little space um, and it's addressable and findable by this address within that space. Um, if that sounds confusing, don't worry too much because what I'm going to show you doesn't doesn't really doesn't depend on your understanding this at this stage, right? So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to create another variable called address, right? And I'm going to put sync, I'm going to put quotes around it, and then that's my address, right? So if I do address. Don't worry about the undefined again, right? So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a variable, which is a representing this contract, right? So the same, this is a graphical representation of the contract in the browser, right? At this address, I'm going to create a, let's say, a command line representation of that of that contract in in the in the console. So if I do var, and then let's say uh, um, adder, right? Or let's call it adder one equals right and I'm going to do eth dot contract I'm going to do eth dot contract and I'm going to pass in my ABI variable which I declared earlier right and then so that that defines my contract and then I'm going to so th that defines the let's say that the template for the contract and then which particular instance of the contract we're interested in looking at it's well it's the one at that particular address right um, so I'm going to do dot dot at and then pass in the address variable, right? And now, so I have this is my this is my representation. So now I have a variable called adder one, right? Which is a a variable in the console which I can now use and I can actually invoke exactly the same methods, the same functions on the on the same contract from from here. As I can here, right? They're both the same contract. So let's let's give it a try. So if I try, for example, let let's let's do one that says um, let's let's rename the contract. So or let's first of all let's get the name of the contract to show that it's the same contract, right? So if we call if we say um, so if we say adder one dot get name, well it's Billy Bob, right? So it's the same contract that we that we set 
um, get name here. If we do add a one dot set name, and then let's call it Billy Jean, right? So this is interesting. I just tried to call set name, and the reason that this, I got an error here is because I need to set a variable as well called the, the default address, right? So I'm going to I'm going to copy this command, and don't worry, all these all these commands will be in the uh, script in the video, right? So I'm going to do I'm just going to copy that in. Okay, so now I've got I've set my default account, so now I can do set name. Billy Jean. Well, I could if the account was unlocked. This is can be a little bit of a pain. So I've unlocked the account now. Now, hopefully, now it should work. Set name Billy Jean. So now I've got a con. Now I've got a. Now I've posted this setter, this set method in a transaction, which is now has to be mined into a block, right? Because we're we're changing this uh, transaction. Uh, sorry, we're changing the state of the contract. My apologies. So if we do ETH dot pending transactions. So we've got one pending transaction. Let's let's make let's uh, make sure the mining miner is running. So so now the the pending transactions is empty. So now if I call adder one dot get name right. And don't forget adder one is our variable which defines the contract, and we can so we can call all the same functions that we defined here right. Add get name, add and rename. We'll show you in a second. Um, set name, right? So add a one dot get name is now Billy Jean. So it's updated. It's updated locally, as in it's updated in our in our um, console. Let's see if it's updated up here because it's a set. Remember, it's the same contract. This browser is connecting to to localhost eight four eight five four five. So it's the same blockchain that we're looking at, and the same contract, right? The same address. We copied it from here. Don't forget. So if I do, let's just expand that again. If I do get name. And now it's changed to Billy Jean, right? So that, that that's pretty cool. So that so so what we've done, what we've shown you how to do, is to actually call these functions from the um, from the from the console. Um, and so and, and from this point, we get kind of we can get a little bit more down and dirty with with uh, with what's going on and start using the browser a little bit a little bit less, right? So that was a quick intro into the the application binary interface, how to get it from the from the console. Um, and and de define and create a variable in your console window to define a contract that enables us to to call methods on specific contracts that are in the blockchain. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to to basically expand on this, but I'm going to um, start a few other nodes in the network and show you how this code that we're running on the contract is actually executing on uh, on, on on all the nodes and reflected in the state of all the nodes, okay? So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.